Across China, every school day starts something like this, with thermal imaging cameras, hand sanitizer, and temperature checks three times a day. In classrooms, kids are together but must also stay a safe distance apart. There's no close contact or sharing things like pencils or books. For students, that's, they all understand that's the practice we, we use to keep them safe at school, so they would all follow. Parts of the new routine may seem extreme. Every morning I sign a health declaration for my son. It's the law, and no parents are allowed on school property. That strict oversight is a trade-off that has helped over 240 million kids return to in-class learning here, from kindergarten to university. Getting back into the classroom and staying safe means accepting a new reality, like doing some classes outside and wearing masks all the time. At this primary school, doors and windows stay open for ventilation. Some classes are shorter and break times a bit longer, which is just fine with eight-year-old Ma Song Chan after months of online learning on his own. I feared the virus when I was at home, but now I don't, he says. Officials here say it took months to hone the system and to convince parents it could work. Here in the school's clinic, lots of hand sanitizer, masks, and a quarantine room. The doctor explains that if someone has a fever, they're brought here to rest until their parents can get them. That 90 percent of China's students are back is being hailed by the government as a sign of triumph over the pandemic. With flu season ahead, there are worries of another wave of infection. But officials say they're ready to contain it by rolling out restrictions and mass testing. For now, it's a return to school like no other. Interesting to see how they're adapting. Are there some things, less, uh, lessons learned there that could be applied here? Well, Savannah, even before classes resumed, we had to keep a temperature record for our son for two weeks, and some schools even banned families from traveling. Now that they're back, there's no after-school activities, no team sports, and no parents. I met my son's teacher for the first time an hour ago on a video call. Now, some argue that some of the measures are excessive, like kindergartens that have been equipped with cameras to monitor because they figure the kids aren't going to wear their masks all day. And already there are some university students who are protesting their campus quarantines and lockdowns. A lot of these measures are not unique to China, though. They're being done elsewhere in the world. It's just that the system here doesn't allow for bending the rules or even disputing them. So in that sense, officials don't seem bothered if people feel inconvenienced by the apps, the surveillance, or any of the restrictions that could help ensure a normal school year.